what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again it's no secret that Ryzen 7000 mini PCs have been hitting the market and today we're going to be taking a look at the all new B-Link SER6 Pro this is powered by the Ryzen 7 7735HS and it definitely looks like a promising little system now you might be familiar with the SER6 non-pro version that was recently released with Ryzen 6000 from B-Link it was actually utilizing the 6800H I did a video on that, I actually did a couple videos, one running Windows, one running Linux, and overall performance is great with the 6800H, but with these new 7000 series mobile CPUs, or rather APUs, they are packing a little more of a CPU punch when you compare it to the 6000 series, given that we do have a higher clock on this unit here. I've always liked the design of the B-Link SER series mini PCs. I think they're super sleek, they look really good, and with this one here, we do get kind of a different color variant. Now I will admit that I am a bit colorblind, but it only usually pertains to oranges and reds. Sometimes when I'm looking at this, it's blue. Sometimes when I'm looking at it, it's green. Not sure if it's just me or other people are seeing the same thing, but there is a little bit of customizability that can go along with this because they do send an extra top cover. And I'll tell you, the one on the far left definitely looks a lot bluer than the one that's installed right now. But along with that and the mini PC, we also get a 6-foot HDMI cable, mounting bracket, we've also got some mounting hardware, and they include a 120-watt power supply. Now when it comes to I.O., up front here we've got two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, a 3.5mm audio jack, and USB 4. This is utilizing 40 gigabit protocol, so we can connect an eGPU, and it'll also work in alt mode, so if you do have a monitor that supports USB Type-C video in and PD charging out, 100 watt is what they recommend. We can plug in just a single cable. I personally refer to it as single cable operation mode. But just keep in mind, you could also power the unit directly from USB 4 if you wanted. Taking a look around back, we've got a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, one USB 2.0 port, another USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, and two full-size HDMI ports. Both of these will support 4K60 out, so in total we can do three displays on the SER6 Pro. Now one thing that B-Link has been doing with their new SER series is adding this new plate in the bottom of the unit. As you can see, we can slide a 2.5 inch drive right in here, but you might notice we've got a fan, and that's because this whole system here actually cools the RAM and the NVMe SSD in here. I really do like this design and hope they continue with it. It's pretty easy to remove. There's three screws, and this will give us easy access to the NVMe SSD. This utilizes a PCIe 4.0 drive and our dual channel DDR5. As of making this video, the only configuration I'm seeing over on their website is a 512 NVMe SSD and and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 4800 megahertz, but this might change in the future. Taking a look at the specs, for the CPU we've got that new AMD Ryzen 7 7735HS. This is still based on Zen 3 Plus, but AMD is calling it Rembrandt R. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz, and a boost up to 4.75. And this does offer a nice little bump in CPU performance when you compare it to the 6800H. But when it comes to the GPU, we're still using the Radeon 680M. So it's still based on RDNA 2. We've got 12 compute units and it runs at up to 2200 megahertz in the 7735HS. This mini PC will support up to 64 gigabytes of SODEM DDR5 running at 4800 megahertz. Like we saw when we pulled the bottom off, we can add one NVMe drive and a 2.5 inch drive. It's got Wi-Fi 6, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet around back, and for all of my testing, I'm going to be running Windows 11 Pro. Like I mentioned, you can power this mini PC from the USB 4 port up front, but they do recommend a 100 watt PD charger. And this comes in really handy in case you've got a monitor that supports USB Type-C video in and PD charging out. All you'll need is a single cable, so we've got it plugged in here, I'll go ahead and boot it up. Give it a few seconds to initialize, and we'll get right into Windows with it using a single cable. And there we have it. I need to log in. And now we have this thing fully running over just that single USB 4 port on the front. And this actually would come in really handy with an eGPU dock like the Razer Core. That does put out 100 watts, so you could actually just plug in this single cable and have your HDMI coming out of the video card you want to pair up with this thing. So I've gone through Windows, updated all the drivers, installed some games and applications that we're going to be testing out. I've also taken a look at the BIOS, and with the TDP here, we're at 45 watts, got to boost up to 65, but from the BIOS, there's really not many settings that we can change. We can even enable a different fan curve with the BIOS we have right now, and this is kind of an earlier unit. Hopefully that changes in the future. 
But overall, I mean, it's set up pretty nicely. Very snappy system. I mean, these Ryzen 7000 series mobile APUs are really quick. And if you wanted to use this as an everyday desktop, you're not going to have an issue whatsoever. Even when it comes to like 4K video playback, two displays, 60 FPS, it's going to be just fine. The unit that I have here has that 32 gigabytes of RAM. So, uh, I mean, we've got plenty here. But, you know, if you did want to pick one of these up and save some money, 16 is going to be more than enough. As you can see from CPU-Z, we've got that 7735HS. Um, memory is at 4800 megahertz. For some reason, it's not showing up correctly with this version. A lot of new stuff going on here, but we've also got the Radeon 680M at 2200 megahertz. So far, I've been really impressed with these 7000 series chips, and now I want to get into some benchmarks just to show you how this thing really performs. And first, we have Geekbench 5. We got a single core of 1459 Multi 8925. Keep in mind, this is using the stock TDP. We can actually up these scores by quite a bit using a third party application to up that TDP. Right now, I don't think it's holding that 65 watt boost long enough to get higher scores here. And I think that really does apply across the board here, even for the GPU scores, because uh, with 3D Mark Fire Strike, we get a 6,458. And the final one I ran here was Time Spy. And with this, we got a 2,669. And the last mini PC that I tested with this same CPU was around 2880. So yeah, I mean, we're definitely working with a little less TDP, at least the long-term boost. So we could go in and use something like APU Tuning Utility to kind of take it up there and keep it there. But I did want to kind of test this out in its stock form factor. So this is what we got. And now it's time to move over to some real world gaming. And first up, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales, 720p, low settings. This isn't bad, and it's getting a lot better on these iGPUs. When this game initially released, and even just Spider-Man Remastered, we had real trouble running this game on these 680Ms, even on 6000 series. But now, at low settings, 720p, we can do over 60 on average. Forza Horizon 5 is one of those games that works really well in a lot of different systems. I mean, you don't need a super powerful GPU to run this. And we're at 1080p medium settings. We can get an average of around 71 FPS. And this is without any kind of resolution scaling. So we're not using FSR or AMD CASP. But if you wanted to get up there in the hundreds, even at 1080p medium, you could take it to performance with FSR and do it all day. Next up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 720p low with FSR set this? to balanced. So this is really good. I mean, I'm getting some decent performance out of this. We got an average of 76 FPS out of Cyberpunk 2077 on an iGPU. And I completely understand we're at 720p, but this is a newer AAA game. A lot of the 3D fighting games that are on the market right now will work really well on this 680Mi GPU. Here's Street Fighter V, 1080p high. Other fighting games I like to run on these APUs are Injustice 2, and with that, 1080p medium, 60fps all day, or even MK11 with a low medium mix at 1080p. Elden Ring is just one of those games that gives us issues on integrated graphics. Now with uh, the 6000 series APUs with the 680M and as you can see here 7000, we're really getting close to just being able to run this at a constant 60 720p low. I could still play it like this and be perfectly fine with it. God of War, 720p, low settings, we get an average of 62 FPS, but in some cases I did see it dip down to around 58. This is how it goes with this game, unless you want to enable ultra performance with FSR, and then it really takes that resolution down, it's super noticeable like that. And the final PC game we're going to be testing in this video is Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I just used the built-in benchmark, seems to get the job done. I'm using the recommended settings, and it actually sets FSR to balanced, and we could probably up the resolution a little bit, take some of the settings down, but yeah, I mean, this is also playable on the SCR6 Pro. 
And before I wrap this video up, the final thing I wanted to take a look at was total system power consumption. So while I'm doing my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter. At idle, pulls around 14 watts. Average gaming, 69 watts. And when stressing out the CPU and GPU to 100% for an extended period of time, this did jump up to 88 watts. I mean, not bad at all, and the cooling system can definitely handle it. So first impressions here, I love the design. I've always been a big fan of B-Link's SER series. I think it's offering great CPU performance. Now with these Rembrandt R APUs, it would have been really nice if AMD just went ahead and did RDNA 3. We're still working with RDNA 2, but for an iGPU, this is putting out some amazing performance. If I had to choose between the 6900HX and the 7735HS, I would probably go with the uh, 6900HX, given that we do have a higher clock on the GPU. But this is more comparable to the 6800H, and I would definitely choose the 7000 series variant over that every single day. There's still a few things I want to do with this mini PC. Uh, mainly, I'd like to install some variant of Linux, Manjaro, or maybe even Steam Deck OS or Chimera OS. Let me know what you want to see on this thing in the comments below. And another thing I'd like to do is just test the overall eGPU performance. We've got 40 gig USB 4 up front. It is compatible with Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. So adding something like an RTX 3060 to this unit would really liven it up. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video. If you're interested in learning more about the B-Link SER6 Pro, I'll leave some links in the description. And let me know in the comments below what you think about Rembrandt R. We're going to see a lot more of these mini PCs hit the market, you know, Ryzen 7000. Is this something you're interested in? Are you going to stick with Ryzen 6000 like a 6900HX or just wait it out for RDNA 3 APUs to come to these mini PCs? I'd love to hear your thoughts, but that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.